So a few weeks ago, I stumbled upon these posts over here. As you can see, Niji Sanji EN launches VTuber auditions and Hololive auditions are also open for male English VTubers. And so I thought to myself like, hey, wouldn't it be kind of funny if I applied and became a VTuber? However, clearly, since I am making this video, you already know that I did not make the cut. But that said, I do want to say that I did give it my all, considering I did spend like a few hours actually refining and editing my application. And the result of that was that I actually made it a little bit further than I thought I would, especially with Hololive. And so today, my guys, let's go on this journey as to how I tried to become a VTuber with all of this application stuff and cover Hololive, Niji Sanji, uh, all you corporate VTuber guys. If you're watching this, this can only be a good thing, right? Like there's literally no secrets to uncover. Your boy is just gonna be elevating the quality of your candidates, okay? That's it, like if I apply again, you won't throw my application into the bin, right? <laughs> right? Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace and today we're gonna to be talking about my VTuber experience, my application audition experience, especially with Hololive, a little bit of Niji Sanji, although that didn't really go anywhere. I wanna talk about things like how was the application process, how I approached each part of it. So if I scroll down, we're gonna see there's an apply button and then there is actually a spreadsheet in which we have to fill out. I wanna talk about the audition videos themselves, this self introduction video here. This is probably the hardest part. And then after that, I wanna talk about the reasons why I was rejected as well well as what I personally think they want from the applicants, just from speaking with them and all of that. Finally, after all of that, I'll probably have a chat about, well, what's next for me personally, considering I got freaking cucked from this one. And so with that said, let's get into the content. However, before getting into the content, kind of ironic, I do want to say that a large part of this video, it's going to be focusing on expectations because I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but being a VTuber or being a content creator, it's not like all fun and games, right? Like I'm sure a lot of it is. Is, but not all of it is. And this is especially true for corporate VTubers, as you will see very shortly. All right, to kick things off, I just like clicked on the application and I landed over here. The same thing, I believe, for Niji Sanji. And so let's go through what exactly I did for each of these ones. I will get to the video at the very end, actually. All right, so some of these are pretty straightforward. Email address, uh, my real name. I put myself as a male and then I put my birthday in. A location, I'm in Australia. Do I own a YouTube channel? Yes, and I think this actually might be the the first decider because I have a stinking suspicion that without my 10k subs on YouTube with you guys, I probably, probably would not have had a chance. However, even if you guys aren't finding major success on YouTube or Twitch or any of these other channels or social medias, I would still highly, highly encourage you to drop it in there because at least it's shown you've had a go at it and you have some kind of like experience with social media as well as content creation. And so that's what I did here. Uh, bam, linked my channel over here. Yes, I own a Twitch channel. Yes, my Twitch channel is pretty dead. I put it in there and then I also put in my Twitter account over there. Okay. Now here is probably where it's gonna get a little bit spicy. What I'm gonna say is that in these three sections, this is the opportunity to kind of flaunt yourself, right? And so obviously the people like myself who has some level of a following, like 10K subs or something, this is the time to dump it in here because I don't think they actually ask you in the Hololive one. So any kind of like credentials, any kind of qualifications that would make you way more attractive than like your next uh, Papa Lace, you pop them right in here. So for example, if you have like 20K subs or if you have 5K subs, you're gonna pop it in here. In terms of video creation, maybe you've made like 120 videos over the last year, or maybe you've made like 12. For me, my YouTube stuff definitely fell into here. I was like, okay, well, I actually do use a whole bunch of different software such as OBS Live, as well as Premiere Pro, as well as After Effects. And I published this on YouTube where I have 10K subs. You see me dropping that figure over there, they'd be like, oh wow, 10K subs on YouTube? You know, it's all right, man. On the other hand, over here, you got experience as a live streamer. I would say even if you don't have like a mega, mega base, maybe you're like holding three to five or so viewers, focus also on your consistency, right? Because it's gonna be like, okay, well, I streamed for about six months and I saw like some level of growth, maybe like a 25% month on month, something like that. And so, yeah, this is the part where you're gonna start really selling yourself. However, in my personal opinion, I don't think this is the most important part. All right, so moving through, of course, I am native in English, although I'm sure like you're moderate or fluent, you probably have a chance. In terms of Japanese language ability, I was like, okay, well, basic or none. You know what? Let me just like inflate my ego a little. I got some basic stuff like, haha, <laughs> baka. All right, so this is where I think it gets a little bit spicy. Please tell us if you have any other skills or talents that would help you as a streamer. I think this is starting to get very, very important because 
A lot of the questions, as we'll get into later on in the interview, they were very much focused around this kind of stuff. And if you have a look at their portfolios, it will become very obvious what they are looking for. So obviously just answer as well as you can, like voice acting, music, drawing, audience interaction, like even holding an audience is actually not that easy. And so for this one, I was like, okay, well, I have some moderate drawing talent. My singing kind of sucks, but I have done a lot of live streams and I used to do skits on like some other platforms, stuff like that. Moving down to the next question, this is actually really important as well because like, well, I'll explain really soon, but essentially the frequency of live streaming you can provide how many days a week. I was like, well, I work a nine to five job and I can commit probably every single day after work to live streaming as well as some Saturdays and Sundays or like find some kind of balance there, right? Now here is kind of like the spicier places. So I actually wrote like paragraphs and paragraphs here. Who is your favorite VTuber and why? For me, it's Shirakami Fubuki. And let me give you guys some context. I actually don't watch VTubers that much. When I do, it's usually in the form of clips. And so for me to answer this question, who is your favorite VTuber and why? I picked Shirakami Fubuki. And the reason is because, well, she was my first and most impactful exposure to the VTuber world. It was actually a stream where she was covering for Marine and Shion when they overslept. Uh, and she did it in such a professional way that like it inspired me not only like from a VTuber perspective, but as like a content creator, right? And so that was my own personal take on it. It was very much in a professional way. I don't know if that is what they're looking for, but I suspect it kind of helped. In terms of the next question, please tell us why you want to join Hololive English. I think uh, it's very, very obvious what they're looking for here. For me, how I answered was that like, well, as a content creator, I think that being a VTuber could be the next level. It could be like taking my entire content creation to the next level. On top of that, I have been very, very much submerged into like anime culture, into like game culture, a lot of Japanese and weeaboo culture. And so I think that like my mindset is very aligned to a lot of the target audience of Hololive English. On top of that, however, I am actually passionate about being a content creator and I do want to entertain and make people feel something, whether it be to laugh, whether it be to cry, whether it be to smile. In my answer that I just gave you, there are a couple of key elements like for me personally and I 100% believe in it. First of all is ambition, right? I wanna take it to the next level. But also second of all is a sense of purpose and passion. That was the logic that I use for answering this question. Uh, and maybe you guys can hone in on that. What exactly is your ambition and show your passion? All right, and so moving on in detail, what kind of activities and goals do you want to fulfill as a VTuber? This is quite an interesting one because like for me, I've primarily focused on like games. And so that is kind of like where I actually steered things towards. Like, you know, this is my core audience. This is my core skill set. I definitely do a lot in terms of mobile games. However, I have certainly done like IRL streams. I've done cooking streams. I've done aimers. I've done card openings. I've done a lot of chess streams back when I was on Twitch. And these are all like a lot of the different things that I would want to do as a VTuber, a lot of variety streaming. However, in my opinion, I think what they're really looking for here, what they're really looking for is a lot of the art and a lot of the music stuff. Do you want to be involved in music videos? Do you want to produce singles? Do you want to do collaborations in which you guys can like do art together? I remember in one of our pre-con collabs with VTubers, they did like a drawing. And so with this question, I would say as well, a lot of ambition and a lot of purpose and passion. All right, now moving on, we have, do you have a management contract with another company? No, because I don't. And are you applying for an audition at another company? Yes, because I am trying for Niji Sanji as well. After all of that, I just hit yes, and then I just hit submit. And so with that being said, let's talk about this self-introduction video. And so how exactly did I approach this one? If your original character has a profile or backstory, please provide it in the video description. How I interpreted this one over here is very similar to how I interpreted uh, the Niji Sanji one. I personally thought that the Niji Sanji one, like the description that they gave, the ask is a lot more clear than the Hollow Live one. But yeah, the way that I interpreted both of these was that essentially you have to do a five minute reel demonstrating your abilities as a VTuber. What if you were a VTuber? How exactly would it go down? And so how I did it personally was I went onto Google. I looked up something like anime male art or something and I found a picture. Unfortunately, I can't find the original one that I used in the Google search, but I will show you guys. 
This is who I was for a brief six minutes. And so massive shout out to Pinlin for this gorgeous, gorgeous art. I just really loved it. And like what happened from here was that I actually just stuck this onto my video and kind of used this 2D JPEG as though it was a VTuber model. In my mind, I kind of made like an interpretation of this character and played him out. I played him out as though I was a VTuber. Who is this guy? And so from here, I kind of played out like a debut, kind of like, well, Hey everyone, the name's Koi. As you can see, I am a little bit cursed, but it isn't all bad. I come from a family that has some specialties, I guess you could say. We have the ability to manipulate water. And somewhere along the line, one of my ancestors, they uh, <laughs> they made a pact with some koi fish, let's, let's put it that way. And so yeah, it was a very, very brief introduction of maybe about like 45 seconds to one minute. And then I went into like, well, like guys, Let's, let's start streaming. Let's just have some fun now. And then after that, what I did was play out a mini scenario. Like <laughs> my dumbass friend, uh, I beat him in a motorcycle race. So he he had to give up his, uh, his account to me. It's called Honkai Impact 3. And so for our debut stream, why don't we go ahead and try that game out? Let's see, uh, let's see what it's about. And then away I went to go play Honkai Impact 3. I put this picture into like where you see me right now. And then from there, I kept going as if I was playing Honkai Impact 3 for the first time. Now, that wasn't really where I ended it. I didn't just like go away and play Honkai Impact 3. So for me personally, I was like, well, I really, really want to make an impression. And I know, I know for a fact that Hololive are really, really looking for the music, for the drawing, for the voice acting. The easiest thing for me to do at that point in time was to sing a song <laughs> and so in my audition i kind of like made an excuse which would funnel me to singing a song so i was like oh man what chat you want to see me sing a song i don't know man like i'm warning you guys i am a sing in the shower kind of guy but if you insist. And before we go any further, no, I am not releasing my clip. My clip is actually still stored unlisted in my YouTube account. You guys will never see it unless I hit 100k subs, which is never happening. <laughs> So don't even think about asking for my audition clip because it's, it's not coming. I, I am not freaking publicizing that one. And that is actually pretty much everything I did for the video itself. Uh, towards the end, however, I did make up another scenario in which I had to essentially cut off my live stream very, very early, right? Like a five or six minute live stream. And so I kind of used like an excuse when my mom was knocking on the door and I was just like, no, mom, no. And she kind of like pulled the plug, like quote unquote for the story on my video. So yeah, I'm not saying that this is the right way to do it, but like, I just hope that my thought process behind all of these different sections as to how I compose this video, I hope it actually made some sense, right? Like you gotta really be in character. You can't just like go into it and be like, hey, Hey guys, my name is uh, Papa Lace and I play gacha games. Like, I don't know about you guys, but that just, it's just not competitive enough considering there are probably hundreds of thousands of people that do want to be a Hololive VTuber or a Niji Sanji VTuber. You gotta really do something to make yourself stand out. However, with that said, that is going to be the end of the application process. And so what happened here was that I went ahead and submitted it. And then after, I believe, a few days, Hololive actually got back to me in email. To this day, I have not gotten a response from Niji Sanji. So uh, I suspect maybe <laughs> maybe my application was kind of crap. So when Hololive got back to me, they were kind of like, well, we kind of liked your audition. Let's talk about interviews. And so I gave him a time. And from here, it's where it got really, really corporate is probably the best way to put it. And so we booked a time and we all jumped into a Zoom call. Well, like almost a Zoom call. Something a little bit like this. And so in the Zoom call were a couple of the cover staff. And before you guys ask, no, I don't know their names. No, I don't know their faces. They were like completely anonymous. And honestly, I could respect that. It kind of makes sense. And so from here, I'm going to be a little bit more vague, but essentially they ask you questions in the same way that they would ask you questions as if you're going for like a normal corporate job. So what I'm trying to say is take all of these questions that they ask and put it into like an internet or like a VTuber context on them. Why exactly do you want to be a VTuber? Why did you pick Hololive? Were there any times when situations got tough and how did you actually remedy them? What was your greatest moment in your career? What level of commitment can we expect? 
expect from you? What are you open to? Just kind of stuff like that, right? And because it felt very corporate to me, I gave very corporate answers back. And so what I mean by that is that unfortunately, I probably didn't let my passion show through and probably let a lot of my business sense go through. However, I think you have to have some business sense if you are going to be working for or as a corporate VTuber. Hololive, at the end of the day, they are a company. They are a company that are looking to turn a profit. They are a company to build a big brand. And so what that means is that there is going to be a strategic direction. There are going to be projects that you need to complete. There are certainly going to be expectations of you where you wouldn't have these expectations or any of these things actually if you were just an independent VTuber. On the flip side, what you can expect is a massive level of support, right? Where you can actually have these VTuber models built for you. You have the live 2D, you have the perhaps even like moderators, you have the people doing the rigging for you, etc., etc. It's very much like, okay, for example, uh, operating machinery in a factory, right? So you're getting into a forklift, like the forklift is owned by a cover. And so what you are doing is you are essentially driving the forklift, but in your own way. I... <laughs> I don't know how I came to a forklift analogy. What the frick? But I think you guys kind of get what I mean, right? And so that was kind of it for their questions. I asked a couple of questions like, oh man, does like being at a nine to five job, like, is that going to screw me and my application? Stuff like that. Or were there kind of like any expectations in terms of mixed media projects? Because if you go through every single Hololiver, Hololiver VTuber, you will see that virtually every VTuber has at least a single if not a lot more. I believe Gaul Gura, I'm so sorry if I just butchered your name, girl. I'm pretty sure she does a bunch of covers as well as these originals. And so yeah, because that's kind of the vibe that I was getting from the interview, uh, like these expectations of mixed media uh, stuff like this, I started asking all of these kinds of questions and that is going to lead me into essentially the next section which is why I was rejected and then why I think I was rejected. So a few days ago, they came back to me and they were like, well, thank you for attending the interview. Unfortunately, you have not made it to the next stage. Again, very, very corporate. We wish you the best of luck and uh, we welcome you to apply again, which I suspect means like, okay, maybe in three months, maybe in a year or something, you can come back and try again. And so I actually took that opportunity to ask, why exactly did I fail? Why didn't I make it to the next round? I asked for feedback, like what exactly should I work on if I want to, to be like a uh, Gaur Gura? And unfortunately, all I was told from here was that the competition was very competitive and I just unfortunately did not meet their criteria. In terms of what I should do next, just, uh, just continue on with what you're doing right now. And so yeah, that was very much like a <laughs> It didn't really give me a lot to work on, you know? However, I certainly did do a lot of reflecting, just like even looking through past all of these answers, thinking back to like my responses on the video call and thinking about what they were talking about. And so here is why I think I got rejected from Hololive. I think first and foremost, I got out YouTubed or I got out subscribed by people bigger than me. Because if we think about it, all of these people and all of these slots, there are only five slots or maybe even three slots, right? Like look at these hollow stars, second gen, third gen, there's only three slots. And then there's four slots for this one. With there being hundreds of thousands of applicants, there are probably quite a fair few that have more than 10K subs. Let's put it that way. The second thing that I think I lost out on was the aspect of music, right? I couldn't sing for shit because if we look into this one over here this one is absolutely not going to help but like let's have a look at this one here me personally i think what they are looking for from applicants are aspiring idols who will do anything to become an idol just from the conversations and from the vibe and from the responses that they were giving it's kind of the mindset that i think that they were looking for very willing to just kind of drop everything and become the best vtuber in the world kind of like mindset and so of course like idols they have to sing songs, I think for the most part. I'm pretty sure every single one of these Hololive VTubers have sang a song. And actually speaking about that mindset, like that like really VTuber must be an idol kind of mindset, I think because of kind of like the corporate nature of the responses that I gave, my passion didn't come through. And so therefore they'll probably like, oh man, this guy is kind of just like looking for a job kind of thing. He's a bit too business oriented, a bit too focused on like the digital marketing or like the social media aspect. They want idols. They want like people who are going to be full blown singers kind of thing. At least that was my kind of impression. So yeah, in terms of like expectations, that's what I would say expect from the process, expect from the role itself. Now then, with that out of the way, 
<laughs> What's next for me? I'm going to be honest. I invested a lot of time into it because I actually really thought I had a chance. Like A, I thought I had a chance, but also B, I actually, for quite some time, I wanted to be a VTuber. Not just a VTuber, I wanted to be like one of the best VTubers in the world. And where else would you go aside from Hololive or Niji Sanji, right? And so yes, of course, it's only been like four or five days since I got rejected. I am certainly still pretty sad and pretty disappointed that I didn't get the role. And so I guess now I need to really figure out do I really want to train to be a VTuber? Do I want to get my singing up to par? Do I want to focus on my drawing skills and stuff like that? And honestly, I certainly could. Maybe one day I'll be able to sing like Garu Gura. I am so sorry, guys. I actually really don't watch them. But yeah, that's where I'm at in terms of my mindset. I think I might just like slow down have a look at what I really want and see if I want to focus on these aspects. And then one day apply for Hololive or Niji Sanji again. Maybe Niji Sanji will call me back this time. I don't know, man. Hey, your boy is your boy Lace. Come on, man. Niji Sanji, you want to hit your boy up? You know what I'm saying? You know, you got a, you got a potential VTuber over here, man. So yeah, TLDR still figuring things out. However, with that said, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. That This is going to be a very, very long video. And so for that, I am going to apologize to you guys. But it is at this point where I do want to throw off the question to you guys. Was this video kind of helpful in terms of giving you guys insight into the process and what they're looking for? Is it what you guys were expecting in terms of what cover or Hololive or Niji Sanji were looking for? And you know, to be honest, I suspect Niji Sanji might be looking for something else, not like Hololive. And so if you guys are kind enough to drop a comment down below i would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video so thank you guys so much if you did enjoy this video please consider a like a subscribe or a notification bell thing but otherwise my guys as your girl gaugura once said all good things must come to an end so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye bye